Salli ala Muhammad Wa Respected elders, dear young ones, brothers and sisters in Islam, may the peace and blessings of Allah be upon you all. Assalamu alaikum jami'an wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. One day in history, the day of Ashura, which changed the course of history, which changed mankind's way of thinking, reflect, contemplate. Don't ever think that it's quantity that matters. Remember, it's the quality that matters and it's truly important to learn of all the letters that we learn from our shura we learn many many lessons every year we are those who revive the message as the 60 imam would say amrana, man ahya amrana. when that person told them yadna rasulillah where we live we sit down we gather and remember the ahlul bayt he said Continue to perform what you perform. Revive the message of the Ahlul Bayt till Kalmajaris Uhibbuha. Such gatherings, the Imam of their time, the six Imam states, we love. And every year, year upon year, over thousands of years, over a thousand years, after the event of Ashura, after the event that took place in Karbala, we gather and remember a moment, a few hours that took place. But every time we remember, we learn another lesson, something different, a different perspective. Not that the change of, there's a change in the scenario of the day of Ashura. No, it's the moment that shows for us that the Husseini message is a day-to-day -day message in our lives. That if you wish to be a Husseini, apply the lessons of Imam Hussein in your life today. For Hussein is a message for the rest of the generations to learn from. For Hussein is a message for the rest of the world to learn from. Hussein is a universal, immortal, eternal message. And everyone who was there in Karbala, those who were the loyal companions of Imam Hussein, they had immense love for Abu Abdullah and Hussein. And no doubt, many of us who come to such gatherings, we come because we have a love towards Abu Abdullah and Hussein. And it's as if this heat of this gathering, it doesn't subside. In fact, in himself, the Holy Prophet would state, إِنَّ لِقَتْلِ الْحُسَيْنِ حَرَارَةٌ فِي قُلُوبِ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ لَا تَبْرُدُ أَبَدًا In the martyrdom of Abu Abdullah al-Husayn, there is a special heat, a special warmth, a special feeling that shall never subside. And this heart of ours has also the hub of Abu Abdullah al-Husayn, the love of Abu Abdullah al-Husayn, which we wish to year upon year ignite this love, reignite this message that we are muhibbi of Abu Abdullah al-Husayn. We are the lovers of Abu Abdullah al-Husayn. That's why you find one of the shuhada, when he came to the battlefield, it was a tradition that whoever used to come towards the battlefield would mention, for example, their name, their background, who their family tribe is, some details about themselves. Now you notice this young person, when he came to the battlefield, he didn't mention his name. He didn't mention his family. He didn't mention what background he's from. All he said to this, oh enemies, oh the world today, know this. If you wish to know who I am, know this. Amiri Husseinun wa ni'mal Amin. Amiri Husseinun wa ni'mal Amin. Surur Fuad al Bashir al Nadir, Ali al Fatima Walida. Fahal ta'alamun lahu min Nadir. If you wish to know who I am, just know that my master is Hussein, and there is no other master in this world like my master Hussein. His father, Amir al Mu'mineen, his mother, Sayyid al Nisa al Alameen. He is the grandson, Surur Fuad al Bashir al Nadir, the grandson of Rasulullah, the one who Rasulullah would be full of joy and happiness when he would see Hussein. Do you know anyone who can replace Hussein in my life? No, there is no one who can replace Hussein. All he wished for the world to know is that don't know, you don't need to know about me. 
All you need to know is about my master, Abu Abdullah Hussein. That I am a follower, a lover, a one who wishes to be of those true supporters of Abu Abdullah Hussein. In the same way today, when we perform the ziyarah, or when we come to the gatherings, or when we go to the actual shrine of Abu Abdullah Hussein, all we wish to say to our own selves, to our own nafs, that my master is Abu Abdullah Hussein. Who am I? I've come from far, I've come from there, I've come from here, I've come from there. Doesn't make any difference. All I wish to know and all I wish to emphasize and all I wish to be and live and die on the path of the love of Abi Abdullah Hussein. That's why the Imams of the Ahlul Bayt, they would encourage one to go and recite the ziyar of Abi Abdullah Hussein. Go and pledge your love towards Abi Abdullah Hussein. Go towards the shrine of Abi Abdullah Hussein. There will be recommendations. Even they will state that under the Qutbah of Abi Abdullah Hussein, under the dome of Abi Abdullah Hussein, يَقْبَلُ اللَّهُ الدُّعَى تَحْتَ قُبَّتِهِ the dua is accepted, a form of knowing, guaranteed that your dua is accepted, is to go under the shrine of Abi Abdullah Hussein. Zuru, they will say, go towards the ziyar of Abi Abdullah Hussein. As the eighth imam will say, وَإِنَّ زَائِرَهُ لَيَنْقَلِبْ وَمَا عَلَيْهِ مِنْ ذَنْبِ He goes to the ziyar, one goes and says, Salam to Abi Abdullah Hussein. As soon as they return, there are no sins upon their shoulder. What have I done? I've, all I've done is recited the ziyar of Abi Abdullah Hussein. Or on the sixth Imam, when those returned from Karbala after performing the ziyar of Abi Abdullah Hussein, he will say, May Allah bless you for such a ziyar that you have performed. So they would encourage the visitation of the shrine of Abi Abdullah Hussein. Encourage the ziyar of the Qubur also in itself, one should visit a cemetery. Ziyarat al Qubur. And we find that this recommended deed sometimes is lacking in our communities and our societies. When you ask some of your friends or a group of people, when was the last time in this city you went to visit a cemetery? Some of them cemetery? I've never been to a cemetery. The only time I go to cemetery is when we go to, for example, Wadi al Salam in the holy city of Najaf. You've not been to a cemetery? You notice the Ahlul Bayt, they would encourage the importance of regularly one goes to the Qubur. When you find things in your life are difficult, go to the cemetery. Why? For there are many lessons, however, that one can take by going and sitting by the great and learning lessons by the importance of knowing that every single one of us is one day going to die. When you go to that qab, any qab you see, learn lessons from this qab. Learn that one day we'll go towards this place. This home will be my new home. And why do we fear going to cemetery? Because we want to not face reality, some of us. We don't want to have that reality check. Why do we fear death? As Imam Hassan was asked, and Amir al muni was asked, why do some people fear death? Why? Why? Because you ruined your akhirah. You ruined that, old, that new home of yours, and all you were thinking about was this dunya, building this dunya, building this dunya. And no one wishes to move from a place that they built to a place that they have destroyed and ruined. Go to the Qabr, reflect on that Qabr, take lessons, contemplate, learn that this world is a transient life, temporary. No one is going to be here to stay. Learn and think about this. Go to those cemeteries and see for yourself that there were people who passed away and died and were buried who were younger than you, who were elder than you, who were children. That death 
has no guarantee when it will come, where it will come, and how it will come. Take lessons. Take Ibra, Kafar al Mawti, Wa'ada. Yes, we should go. And it's recommended for us to perform Ziyarat al Qubur. Many times we find that there are some who would come to you and say, No. Why are you performing Ziyarat al Qubur? They would say, No. It's prohibited. Forbidden. Don't go to any graves. Once you buried them, that's it. Don't return. And you find this. Sometimes when we wish to visit the Ahlul Bayt, Salawatullah Salaam Alayhim, there are some who stand there and say, Don't perform Ziyarat. Don't. That's it. Walk ahead. And some of them would bring out a verse from the Quran and say, Yes, it says in the Quran, Don't visit graves. You tell them where? Chapter 9. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the only chapter that doesn't start with Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim وَلَا تُصَلِّ عَلَىٰ أَحَدٍ مِّنْهُمْ مَا تَأَبَدَىٰ وَلَا تَقُمْ عَلَىٰ قَبْرِهِ Yes, Allah says in the Quran, and do not stand by those who passed away, who've died, and do not stand by their graves. And some also say, oh really, it says this in the Quran, that we shouldn't stand by their graves. But ask that person to continue the same verse, the same verse. وَلَا تُصَلِّ عَلَىٰ أَحَدٍ مِّنْهُمْ مَا تَأَبَدًا وَلَا تَقُمْ عَلَىٰ قَبْرِهِ Do not stand by their graves. Why? إِنَّهُمْ كَفَرُوا بِاللَّهِ وَرَسُولِهِ وَمَاتُوا وَهُمْ فَاسِقُونَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala states why. Why? Because they disbelieved in Allah and disbelieved in the Messenger of Allah and they died whilst they were committing sins and sins and sins. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala provided this as a lesson because at that time there were people who would go towards graves and they would eulogize and they would praise the person who's just passed away and they would say poems about them. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forbid at that time, at the beginning, early stages, forbid that culture, forbid that performance. Why? Because they were praising those who are open enemies of Allah and His Messenger. That's why afterwards Rasulullah himself stated, There was a moment of time, a period, that Rasulullah, according to this verse, himself said that, Yes, we forbid you at the early stages from ziyarah of Qubur. But now Rasulullah, in that same hadith, says the tradition, now I give you, you permission, I give you permission and permit you and encourage you and recommend you to go and perform ziyarat to Qubur, go towards the ziyarat of Qubur. Aisha, the wife of the Prophet, says that Rakhasan Nabi, the Prophet gave permission, Rakhsa, for one to perform ziyarat to Qubur. Himself, Rasulullah, would go to the grave of his mother, the hadith states. Nabi, and he started to shed tears and cry whilst he was performing the ziyarah of his mother and also all those who are around Rasulullah seeing Rasulullah shedding tears and crying by the qab of his mother they also started to shed tears and they also started to cry after the martyrdom of her uncle Hamza, her great uncle Hamza, who became a shaheed in Uhud, she would regularly on Fridays visit Hamza's bab and cry and recite dua and prayers. Recite to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala prayers and dua. Amir al Mu'minin himself would encourage and recite and say to one another, go and perform ziyarah of the Qubur. And on one occasion, when the Amir al-Mu'mineen, when he passed by a graveyard, a cemetery, Ya Ahl al-Diyar al muhisha Ya Ahl al-Qubur, O people of the grave, is there any message that you have for the people who are not in the graves now? Is there any message for us today? Amir al mumin would ask for us to know. He would tell us, yes, there is a message that the people of the grave are telling us now. What is it? 
إن خير الزاد التقوى. That the best provision, the best thing that you can do to provide yourself the best comfort, the best lifestyle in your new home, in your new place, in your new residence, in your abr, is to have taqwa. Three things at the time of death, three things may come towards that grave. Two return and only one stays with you. Your family comes with you. They say, La ilaha illallah, La ilaha illallah. But once they bury you, the family return. Your wealth, you may have your wealth coming with you. But once you die, once you're buried, your wealth is no longer of any value. It's gone. It doesn't stay with you in Qabr. But the only thing that shall stay with you in Qabr and shall be of benefit and nur and illuminate your own grave, your own grave, is the taqwa, is the God consciousness, is the good deeds that we should perform to enlighten our own graves. It's a wake-up call. We should regularly visit the graves, regularly reflect upon them. There was an academic, an academic, by the name of Professor Anne-Marie Skinner. On her tombstone, she asked for these inscriptions to be written on her grave, on her tombstone. She was buried in Europe, and you can till now see it, this inscription. It says in German, in European language, but the inscription is from this word. The words of who? The words of Ali ibn Abi Talib sallallahu wa sallam alayhi and nasun yamun fa immatu intabahu. Mankind is dormant. Mankind is asleep. People are asleep. But when they die, they wake up. They wake up. But for many of us, when it comes to the moment of death, and when we wake up, it is way too, too late. There'll be some, they'll say, Ya Allah, allow me to return to this dunya, to increase in my good deeds, to remove my sayyat, to remove my sins. Maybe I can perform some more good deeds, but it's too, too late. So when we go to the ziyar of the qubur, let us take ibrah, take lessons. And the greatest of lessons that we can take is when we go to the ziyar of the imams of the Ahlul Bayt, when we go to the ziyar of the prophets, when we go to the ziyar of the awliya Allah. As we mentioned, that when we perform, for example, the ziyar of the Ahlul Bayt, وَعَبَدْتَ اللَّهَ مُخْلِصًا and how they truly worship and obey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sincerely. The true obedience which is a sincere obedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. A true worship. When we see the sixth Imam, Imam Ja'far al-Sadiq salawatullah wa salamu alayhi, when he encouraged us to perform the ziyarah of Abu al-Fadl, Abu al-Fadl al-Abbas, he says these words that we recite when we perform the ziyarah of Abu al-Fadl al-Abbas. Ashhadu laka bi tasneem wa tasdeeq wal wafa. Abu al-Fadl al-Abbas, what were your highlights that we bear witness and testify? He states, at tasneem, you were truly submitting to the way of Allah. Wa tasdeeq, you were truthful to the way of Allah. And our discussion tonight, wal wafa, and the loyalty that Abu Fadl Abbas had. The loyalty that we need to learn many lessons from those who are the true ones of Karbala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in chapter 4 reminds us about the importance of this characteristic. O oh, you who believe, O oh, fool, O oh, you who believe, be loyal. To that promise that you give. وَالْمُوفُونَ بِعَهْدِهِمْ In another verse. Those true believers, those true righteous ones are who? Are those who are loyal when they have been given a 
promise when they give a pact, a promise, they are loyal. In the world today, we learn lessons from those who are loyal. And sometimes we need to reflect on this loyalty and love that they have. Do we have this love and loyalty to the Imam of our time? Do we have this love and loyalty to the Quran? Do we have this love and loyalty to the Deen of Islam? Do we have this love and loyalty to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala teaches us about the loyalty that others have to their master. For example, that loyalty of that member of Ashab al Kahf. Who was he? A dog. One of the noble characteristics of a dog is its wafa. Its wafa is loyalty to his master. That's why the poet says so beautifully, فَازَ كَلْبٌ بِحُبِّ أَصْحَابِ كَهْفٍ كَيْفَ أَشْقَى بِحُبِّ آلِ عَلِيٍ A dog was successful, was victorious for his love and loyalty towards Ashab al-Kahf, the companions of the cave. How can I be wretched if I have love towards Ali Ali, towards the family of Amir al-Mu'min Ali ibn Abi Talib? Do we have that love and loyalty? I remember reading that an example of a loyalty of a dog, they said that there was a, a dog in Japan, this dog was called Hachiko. This dog, every day, at the train station, at the same time would come, when his owner, the master would come, he would provide him some food. Greet him, provide him some food and leave. He would go to work. After some time, his master passed away, died. That man passed away. They report for nine years, this dog would come to the same train station at the same time, at the same place, waiting for his master, waiting for that moment that he was there. He was loyal, loyal to that meeting, loyal to that moment that he was. Are we loyal to the Imam of our time? Are we loyal to, to Islam? Man kana yu'minu billah wal yawm al akhir, the Prophet says, whoever truly believes in Allah, believes in Allah, and believes on the judgment day, the day of judgment, let them be loyal. If they give a promise, let, they give, let, them, give, let them be truly loyal to that promise. Like how Rasulullah, a man came to pledge allegiance to Rasulullah. He said, Ya Rasulullah, I wish to give bay'ah and pledge allegiance to you. He said, I'll come at this time to this specific place. The first day that person didn't come. Second day he didn't come. Rasulullah was there, first day. Second day he was there. Third day. He promised to come on the first day. He didn't come first, second. He came on the third day. Rasulullah said, Oh man, you have caused so much difficulty to me. For three days I was waiting for you at this time and place and you did not come. How many of us we give promises but we keep on break our promise to the Imam of our time. We promise to become better. We promise to improve. But every time we give that promise, we are not truly loyal towards that promise. We are not loyal, some of us. It reminds me of this Story, it's a parable story. It's not a true story, not only which book it's in, it's a parable, it's a moral story, it's an anecdote. One day at the member of Abu Abdullah Hussein and a guitar, they came together. So the member asked the guitar, so it's been years, we were one tree, both from wood. Where have you been? What's happened to you? He said, the guitar said, now I'm the performance of haram places, music, and it's really disappointing, and I'm in these gatherings. Oh, what are you doing? The member said, Alhamdulillah, I'm in majalis of the Ahlul Bayt, the Kareem come and recite, the speakers come, the scholars come, Quran recitations, Mu'mineen come, Mu'minat come, and they gather around this 
member of the Ahlul Bayt. The member sees the guitar starts to cry. He says, why are you crying? He says, I'm honored that you have reached such a place and such a great place. But what hurts me is that some of those who sit beside you, around you, are the same ones who come to my gatherings. Those who come to your gatherings, they're not loyal towards the member of Abu Abdullah Hussein. And they come to my gatherings, the gatherings of Haram. And this is a, sometimes a reflection for us all. Let us be truly loyal to the member of Abu Abdullah Hussein. Now that we have this true love, inshallah, we have this love that we say that we love Abu Abdullah Hussein. And we wish to be of those who are muhibbi of Abu Abdullah Hussein. Let's learn that characteristic, that quality that if I love Hussein, I need to be loyal to Abu Abdullah Hussein. Universal quality characteristic is to be loyal. Afar. You see some of our brothers, some of our community members, you tell them, let's go buy this fruit from Woolworths. Say, no, 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 Coles. So why Coles? He says, I'm a loyal member. I have a card, loyal member of this place, membership. You say, let's take this airline. He says, no, 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 you have to only take this airline. So why? It's the same time. It's the same destination. It's cheap on this airline. He said, no, I have a frequent flyer membership. I'm only loyal to this particular airline. And you find that this loyalty is a characteristic. People have enjoyed the importance of this loyalty towards other things. But do we, do we embed and do we show that we are Truly lovers of Ahlul Bayt, truly lovers of Allah, truly lovers of the message, the truth, and truly loyal to that truth. How others are victorious in their love and loyalty, like that dog, let us be even greater and learn to be of those who are muhibbi, those who are true lovers and truly loyal to the message. When you see when members of our community get married, what is one of the important characteristics? Love and loyalty. To love one another, that love and mercy that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala shares between them and to be loyal to one another. To be loyal, to do or die, we'll be together. And they say that I'll be loyal, I truly love you. Like that husband and wife, the wife was very loyal. The husband said, look, the husband was very rich. And sometimes people, the richer they get, the stingier they get. He said towards his wife, look, you've been so loyal to me. You've done everything I ask. And we've always been truly loving and loyal to one another. I have one final wasi, I have one final message. Why? What is it? He said that when I die, when I pass away, in my bab, in my grave, all my money, place it in my grave. He said, okay, Sean. He said, do you promise you'll do this? He said, yes, I promise I'll be loyal, as I've always been loyal. After some time, he passes away, and it's a cemetery, and the undertakers come to take the casket to bury him. Any messages, anything? She says, yes, yes, hold on a second, there's something I need to do. She comes from far, opens the casket, and places something inside the casket, closes the casket, and says, yes, now you can bury Her friend, who was aware of the, of the will that the husband had mentioned to her, said, are you serious? You actually placed all the money into the grave, into the casket? She said, yes. I bank transferred all his money to my account and wrote him a check and placed it in his casket. And if he can cash the check, then it's up to him. But he has all the money in that check written there. I was loyal to the last one. This loyalty we find in our lives today how important it is. And loyal we need to be. Loyal we need to learn from others. Loyal we need to learn 
from whom the greatest loyalty when is when Abu Abdullah Hussein stood up when he tested every single companion and every single companion did not move from their stance and they said Ya Abu Abdullah will not leave your path will remain in love of Hussein, will live in love of Hussein, and will die with the love of Abu Abdullah Hussein. And even if it means that we'll come back alive and die, not just die, killed in love of Hussein, burned in love of Hussein, ripped into pieces in love of Hussein, and die again in love of Hussein will be loyal to the message of Abu Abdullah Hussein. That's why Abu Abdullah Hussein, what did he say? He says, Inni la a'lamu ashaban awfa wa khayran min ashabi. If we wish to learn about loyalty, true loyalty, look at Karbala. Look at the great love and loyalty they had. That Imam Hussein stands up, the Imam of the time says, I do not know of anyone in history and in future, any companions who have the loyalty that you, my Ashab, have and are greater than my Ashab. The loyalty that they have cannot be compared to anything. One of them passes away. How does he pass away? At the time that the Imams were performing Salatul Jama'ah, he's shielding and protecting the Imam of his time. He is struck by the arrows. After Salah, Imam approaches him. That man, Imam asks him, is there a final message that you have? What does the man, the Shaheed, say? He looks at Abu Abdullah, he says, Our faith, Ya Ibn Rasulullah. Ya Abu Abdullah, all I wish to know was at this last moment, my last few breaths in this world, my last few seconds, Ya Abu Abdullah, all I wish to know, was I loyal to you? At the time of my death, when the Imam is aware of our death, can we truly say that I was loyal to Imam Sahib al Zaman? Was I loyal to the Imam of my time? That man, he became Shaheed with love and loyalty to the Imam of his time. When another of the companions in the battlefield, he calls out to the Imam of his time, the Imam rushes to him with Habib ibn Mawahir. As Habib used to rush towards the companions, that man, Habib says, is there a final message you have towards me? He looks at Habib, Ya Habib, O Sika Bihada. My final message is that you take care and stay till your last moment in your life. O oh, Habib ibn Madahir, in true love and loyalty with this man. And he points towards Abba Abdullah, Hussain, O Sika Bihada. And there is a loyalty that Imam al-Sadiq towards us in the ziyarah. And is a lesson for us all about true loyalty that took place. And that is the wafa of Abu al-Fadl al-Abbas. The loyalty that he had towards the religion of Allah, towards the deen Hanif. The loyalty that he had towards the teachings of the Qur'an, the loyalty that he had towards the Imam of his time and love of the Imam of his time. Moments before the event of the battlefield, Shimr ibn Adil Joshan asks for his relatives, asks for his cousins, who comes out, Abu al-Fadl al-Abbas, who was related to Shimr ibn al-Joshan. Shimr says, Abbas, we have a protection for you. We can take care of you. You are safe. 
We are here to take the life of Hussein ibn Ali. You, you are saying, what does Abbas stand up and say? Qabbahd wa qabbaha amanatuk. What an ugly thing for you to say to me. And what an ugly amana that you are giving, a protection that you are giving. You wish me to come towards this side to go against the Imam of my time, Aba Abdullah Hussein, to leave the path of Aba Abdullah Hussein. No, Abbas will remain in love and loyalty throughout his life until his death on the hub and the wafa of Abu Abdullah al Hussein. As the poet says so beautifully about Alamda, what does he say? A haramat qiblaya hajatama Ya de to abalfas Ya de to tasbihu muna Jatama Abal Fas Ay Haramat Qibliya Ha Jatama Ya de to tasbihumuna Jatama Taj Shahidan Hame Alami Dast Ali Mahabani Hashemi Abal Fas Amn Imam Akhu Ibn Amir the uncle of the Imam, the son of the Imam, the brother of the Imam, Ammu Imam, Akhu Ibn Amir, Dasta Ali, Ammu Imam, Akhu Ibn Amir, Hazrat Abbas, Alayhi Salam, Maktabito, the lessons of Abbas, Maktabito, Maktab Ishqa, Wafa. The lessons from Abbas are the lessons of love and loyalty of the many lessons Abbas taught us. Maktab to Maktab Ishqo Wafas Dars Alif Bayato Sidqo Safas Abbas That's when he approaches that river of Furat Abbas is thirsty he has had nothing to drink himself. He looks at the water of Furat. Ya nas min ba'dil Hussein huni wa tashrabina ba'id al-ma'ini. Oh, sir, how could it be that you drink from the sweet river, from the sweet water? When your master, Aba Abdullah al Hussein, is thirsty, Abbas would not drink. He will splash the water away. All he wishes to do is return water to Sakina, return water to Rabah, to return water to Zainab, to return water to Aba Abdullah al Hussein, to return water to the Khayma to return water to the children. He fills the bag full of water. Alam dara karbala abal fazl. As he is riding on that horse, mounting the horse, Abbas is returning towards the Khaymah. As if there are these words calling out, Ya Abbas, jim al laskina. Ya Abbas, Jim and Mai. Abel Fadl Abbas is returning towards the Khaymah. One by one, the enemy start to attack Abbas alayhi salam. The right hand of Abbas, they slice it away. All Abbas wishes to do is return the water to Khaymah. Ya people, oh people know. Wallahi in qata'atumu yameeni, inni uhami abadan. Andini, by Allah, you have chopped away my right arm, my right hand, Abbas, 
will continue to defend his Imam of his time. He'll continue to be loyal and be full of love towards the Imam of his time. Abbas is returning with some water. They attack his left arm and they slice away his left arm. All he wishes to do is return the water. They start to attack him. They start to strike him. They start to pierce arrows towards Abbas. One Sam, one pierced arrow would pierce Abbas's eyes. It's fine as long as Abbas returns water towards the Khayma. Then they would pierce an arrow to the chest of Abbas. It's fine. Alamdar wishes to return water. Then they pierce an arrow to the water bag. The water splashes onto the floor. Falafal Abbas Mutahayra. Abbas at that moment knew what to do. What should I do? How can I return to Zainab and Sakina whilst there is no water? Then they strike Abbas one by one until a man strikes him with an iron heavy pole onto his head. Abbas falls heavy on the floor. Abbas falls harshly on the floor. Mianu, every single one of us, when we fall on the floor, we have two hands to protect us. But Abbas had no hands to protect him. He fell on the floor, on the sands of Karbala. Ya Aba Abdullah, rush towards Abbas. Aba Abdullah comes towards Abbas alayhi salam. Abbas, this is your beloved Hussein. This is your Hussein. Abbas, Imam Hussein, فَوَضَعَ رَاسَهُ فِي حِجْرِهِ Imam Hussein places the head of Abbas in his lap. Abbas removes himself and places himself on the sands of Karbala. Imam says, Ya Abbas, why do you do this? Why do you emphasize that you remain on the sands of Karbala? Look at the loyalty Abbas had. He said, Ya Abba Abdullah, Ra'si fi hijrik, my head in your lap, wa ba'd sa'a, and in one more hour, whose lap would your head be, Ya Hussein? Ya Abba Abdullah, even in the last moments of Abbas's life, he was so full of love and loyalty to his Imam that he said, Ya Hussein, allow me to remain on the sands of Karbala. He knew that there is no day. La yawm ka yawm ka ya Aba Abdullah. You in an hour would call out, Ala bin Nasrun yansuruni. Ayna Habib, Ayna John, Ayna Ali Akbar, Ayna Abbas, Wahidan Farida. You would be all alone, Aba Abdullah al Hussein. You would be all alone when the enemies would attack you, Aba Abdullah al Hussein. Abbas remains loyal towards his master. Abbas would call out, Ya Hussein, and we call out with Zainab and Abbas, Ya Hussein.